Hello and welcome to Vice Man Channel. The holidays are upon us and I'm thinking of revisiting the Chameleon Ultra project that I covered six months ago. So a lot of things have changed, I hope. Uh, yes, tag along and you will see what. Let's get started. Heading over to the firmware page and uh, over firmware repo, we can see that they have made a new release. It's a release on the 26th of September, version 2.0. And they still have a few commits being pushed in. Something about paralyzing the MF key recovery process. So that looks good. Heading over to the Chameleon Ultra project, we will see that the download pages here are very much simpler. You can easily download the Windows Portable version or install version or different other ones there. There seems also to be some translations going on and test flight if you want to do this. And uh, I'm very curious what has happened. Let's see what has happened. I already downloaded uh, this one here. So I'm just, you know, I have installed the portable version of it. And let me go this to start up this one here. Um, one thing that I do when I examine this is that I look at the assets, fonts, packages, and some other data here. So this is my file that I added to my uh, default keys dictionary. But let's see what happens when we start it up. Mm, when we start first looking into it, it looks the same, but it looks a little bit better. Um, mm, 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 mm. I was at the Black Hat Me in Middle East Africa and I had an opportunity to present um, this Chameleon Ultra UI to a lot of people, about 400 people over, over the course of two, three days. And one of the things we did was that they you know, started from zero and tried to use something. And we always had a problem to understand that this was a button. Some people you know are used to computers immediately move the mouse and see that oh well it highlights, but the other ones just looked at it I and mean, were going directly here to the menu. Now trying to explain this was a different story. You now can see that the firmware version is seen here and it does a quite you know it does very easily to upgrade it. Uh, they changed that process so you can actually update the firmware very easily. So it pulls from the GitHub repo. You don't have to build anything like that. So yeah, that's good. Kind of cool. Uh, slot manager looks like this, looks much better. And if you press one of them, you jump into your uh, save cards and you select it. If you press here, uh, you can say which one should be activated when you're doing this. Uh, that was something that people also had an issue with, not knowing that this is a click, this happens to be something, and this happens because they immediately tried to do this when I told them that you should now load a file onto it. So that was, no, you click here. Okay, that's simple, yes. So it was a little bit confusing, I guess. Maybe, I don't know, some instructions. So the files loads easy. Let's go over to the save cards. Same thing here. And you also see my default key list here, which I can have a quick look at. I can rename it and delete it and download it. Uh, yeah, that's output file. This is something that also confused me a little bit. So if I go back here, whoops, not gonna be this one. I'm gonna be here. This is my portable version of this Chameleon Ultra. And if I look at those folders here, there's nothing there. I can't see the the, the saved data files. I mean, this is my file. So when I go back in here, whoop, back in here, I can do, I can save it, but I thought this was saved somewhere, but I don't know where. So it means that I have to save this. <laughs> where are you? Yeah, especially like this. And that's an extra step that I don't know if I think is the best to do. So the JSON file is there, uh, not supported by the Proxmark to read. I don't know, it's almost like, I don't know, 
It's very odd. I, where's the file saved? Because otherwise, you know, if you use a download tool like the Flipper or the Proxmark or the MCT tool on Android, you would just drag files in. But I guess you do that with plus and then you just manually add them that way. Would be easier if it was a file folder somewhere in the path where it's all saved and it would be easy to do. Read card, uh, still the same. Uh, this button here looks a little bit strange, but you know, it does both. Uh, write card, apparently not implemented yet, but would be able to do later on. Here is import settings and export settings. You can select languages now. And I've changed a whole heap of languages, Italiano. Uh, so that's cool. That's something that's happened here in the UI. So if I export it, I can do it as a QR code and send it to people. That's cool. Uh, I also can do a JSON file. So let's save that as a JSON file. And then click that one again. And if I go in and look at this JSON file, I notice that all my data files is in the settings file. I don't know how that ended up doing like that. That's deliberate or not deliberate. Maybe it is. But I don't know if I agree that the settings file should have the card dumps in it. With that said, if you go into about button, you see it pulls all here. You can see all these developers and little images as well. And that made me wonder, where is all those pictures coming from? And then I realized that uh, this project phones home and it phones everywhere. So if you have a, I remember I doing the Chameleon Mini uh, UI. There's a lot of people come, you know, was worried about privacy. So they wanted to do, you know, making sure that it doesn't phone home. I said, this will phone home to see if there's an update. And otherwise you have to compile it yourself. But in order to control that. Uh, however, this software phones home or phones away a little bit everywhere. So it, it goes and pulls the latest contributors, the artifacts. And it does everywhere, it does this uh, API calls. So this one is, you know, if if you wanted to have this software in a closed environment, it doesn't do even a control of that. You need to uh, have that in mind, but it does talk a lot with other services. It doesn't just stay on your computer and talk to the chameleon. Uh, deactivate debug mode, cancel now, because this is what I activated here. And it gives you added uh, availabilities, like um, um, running the different attacks. But I think this is uh, in like in, in test out trial mode still, in order to uh, um, before it becomes ready implemented nicely. So it's kind of awesome. Uh, you see this gen. Oops, uh, read gen one card, nested attacks dark side. So I was speaking to DXL about this uh, a month ago i had a chance to meet him and um, that was kind of nice improvements he did to the nested and dark side in order to run it smoother and i think it should all be uh, easily there mm. but, but let's go back here if i want to so if i have a slot here i, I, I like if i want to load up on low frequency slot right then i need to select a file for it so in order to do that i need to do read so i'm gonna let the proxmark simulate a a uh, an em marine 4105 bytes so we just take a simple value there Oops. You didn't like that. What didn't you like for that? ID. Here we go. And we're heading over here. Read. And as you saw in a nice little picture, my chameleons on uh, the proxmark. Right. So we have the there. I will stop simulating. Post done. So I can save this now. 
and we say um, em one one two two one one two two three three four four five five and press OK. Great. Now look and save cards. I have my em tag, which is good. And now I can do that on slot manager, and I can upload that to this slot. All right. So if I choose slot five, and let's see about that. Let's go there. Um, mm, mm, mm. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I go to slot five here. Uh, oops. Oh. Uh, okay, four, five. Right, so it's in five mode now. And if I go back to term, go here, I left search, and it finds it. So that's okay. It's not very much distance if you try to read it. You know, this is just, if I go back to here, uh, it failed there. This is not much diff. So, uh, so that's. It's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit sad that it's the distance, reading distance is that well. Really, really picky about that. So anyway, but that works now with a GUI. That's what I want to say. Uh, let's go over here. So this one works. You didn't see that, of course, but yes, it did. So let's do that again. Here we go. Uh, so the reading distance is close. If I go back here, so this that the slot manager has to have a file to upload. It's, it's it's a different way of thinking. So yeah, otherwise I would just have to say in this one, you know, if I if I'm, oh yeah, okay, oh click connect because it disconnected. Uh, if I go here, otherwise I would just have to you know select an em id directly here and that would be much easier uh, like a drop down or something so that's a room for improvements mm. so let's see what more do we have mm -mm -mm -mm. i can write a card no but i can do that in bugging right all right let's see uh, read Gen 1 card. So I have a Gen 1 card laying here. And let's see if I can get this chameleon to read it. Okay, I'm not doing something right. Nope. Nope. What? <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> So let's get back in. But still, it's a huge improvement uh, compared to this uh, one I saw it uh, six months ago. And I think it's been much, much beautiful. Same thing here. When you read a card, and if you do, oh, I can do it from here. That's interesting. Uh, so I didn't do the magic command. So all interesting. And I have to select my. Uh, dictionary here this is what i didn't do last time so i would say empty zero keys doesn't say that it would use the default dictionary or something like that this is kind of unclear still so i would have this yeah yeah so if i do that there we go and all found okay cool Another card, as usual, and save. Test. Uh, done. So if we go to save card, I have now a test again, which is there. So you can export found keys as well. This is cool. So you can add those keys to a dictionary. So you can generate your own dictionary file with recovery fields that keeps track of it. That's really cool, really good. Uh, you can edit, download it, and done. So that is an improvement.
But that leads me still to this folder here where I don't see any of the data files. I still want that. I want to have availability to data files. But anyway, uh, I think it's cool. And so they did a huge improvement and well done. Kudos to Game Tech Live and the whole team out there on the about. All these people here, Game Tech Live, Fukushima, Augusto, Thomas, Akazame, Andres, everybody there, and all those translators has done a well, 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 well job to make this even better. Go and support them and show them some love. Uh, if I take all this away and we go in here and we look at this one, at the Chameleon Ultra firmware page, where we did these improvements. I saw something when I snuck down here on the public roadmap. Uh, this has been added. So we have some idea of roadmap. The dates is already past due dates and it's nothing in progress. However, it says a reward thing here, meaning that RG most likely will reward you for it. I have not found any instructions where and how much and what that will be if you, you know, contribute to this project uh, by code and adding this specific functionality. So that would be interesting to know uh, how it's meant to be. They could clarify it a little bit at least. Um, yep, wish list. Everybody has a wish list. Um, I can see adding desk fire support. You know, that will take some time. All well, the low frequency will be easier. Yep. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this short, short recap of uh, Chameleon Ultra firmware and UI project. It's been much better. It's been improvements. And I think you can use your uh, Chameleon Ultra a little bit more today than you could six months ago. I hope you enjoy this video and take care and happy holidays. Merry Christmas, wherever you are. Enjoy it.